Esther is not just a story in the Old Testament. It is a very relevant prophetic word for us right now that I believe God has positioned you. You couldn't be born in, in 1800s or 1700s or in a different place at a different time. God has positioned you for such a time as this. So when we think about that, John, what comes to you with Esther? Just courageous, courageous uh, vision and, and bravery and uh, an anointing. Amen. Yeah. And what is the importance, you think, of that little Jewish girl, Esther, today, for us today? Well, the first the thing is that yeah. I think when we look over and we tend to focus on Esther chapter 4, specifically verse 14, who knows? Now, hear me by the Spirit of God. Who knows if you haven't come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Let, let's dissect that bit before we get into all this. Because when you say, why is the importance? The importance is she fulfilled a mandate that would have wiped out an entire nation, an entire people. The Israelites who were covenant people with God had an eternal enemy. His name was Haman. He was an Amalekite. He'd been after the Amalekites were from a, uh, a king that hated Israel. They attacked Israel. The Bible says they're eternal enemies. Saul was supposed to wipe them out. Nobody finished this job. And here's this young girl. Now, first off, the thing that you need to know is God doesn't consult your past to determine your future. She's an orphan. She's the most unlikely candidate. Maybe you're saying, how could I even, how could I do this? I get it. When I was sitting on Bill Moxley Road in a trailer and God showed me that I would go to every continent, preach the gospel, and that every time I opened my mouth, people would be saved, healed, delivered. I'm thinking, how do I get out of this trailer? They call me trailer trash. It doesn't matter what your circumstance or situation is if they labeled you orphan, poor, not eligible, uneducated, unworthy, um, dysfunctional. No matter what the label is, the devil is a liar. So God shows us that he takes people because her name literally means like myrtle. It, it's a Hadessa, which means like a myrtle tree. And Hadessa means this. That myrtle trees, first off, come from the bottom. God uses people from the bottom. Maybe you say, my finances are at the bottom. My mind's been at the bottom. My life's been at the bottom. My story's been at the bottom. I came from the bottom. God says, good place good place because I raise up from the bottom. Even Jesus himself started his ministry in the Jordan, which is the lowest place on the earth. So you say, what's the importance of Esther? There's so much I can go here. You know the story. There's this woman by the name of Vashti. The king is married to her. She doesn't fulfill his desire, his wishes. And the king says, I can replace you. There's a whole teaching there. Now that might sound harsh, but it's important you understand with spiritual ears that if your hand is to purpose, it's the most important thing because as long as you're committed to purpose, then you are useful to the kingdom. When you don't fulfill purpose, the intention of God, the decision of God, the choice of God, th then we can go, well, you know, okay, I I'm doing my thing. Exactly. You're doing your thing. But God's not saying he loves you. This isn't about unconditional love or grace or that. This is about purpose. He says, yes, you love me, but you're doing your thing. I need someone to do my thing. And so here she was. She was committed to do God's thing. Mordecai, who is a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit, said, you know, Esther, maybe God wants to use you. Vashti was not used by God. So Mordecai raises her, who is like her uncle. And he is a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit. So when the king goes to all the providences of Persia, and he puts out this call, for the next queen. And it's half kind of prideful ego, but even in all this, let's call it flesh, all this stuff, God is at work. You see, often people cannot see God because of all the other stuff. An egotistical king, a queen that's you know, rebellious, taking or doing her own thing, men that had gotten drunk, a dance that they wanted to take place, but God was at work. Satan had a plan and so did God. And maybe they're looking at your family and you can't see you're the Esther raised up to break the generational curse. Maybe you're looking at your nation. You're the Esther raised up that God's going to give the ear to the king. Maybe you're looking at your community. You're the Esther. And Esther is not just gender specific. Esther is a person of obedience that God has positioned in the earth who will obey the voice of the Holy Spirit.
And often people don't obey the voice of the Holy Spirit because they don't even discern it or know it. So here what happens is Esther comes on and Mordecai says, okay, prepare. It tells you something. Before you stand in the presence of the king or fulfill the will of God or the purpose of God for such a time as this, which we're going to get to in just a moment, that Esther chapter 4, are you prepared? Have you been cut in advance? You see, when I was in that trailer, I had no idea that one day God would position me in a White House on behalf of nations, religious liberty, on behalf of multitudes of people. It didn't matter their party. It didn't matter their ethnicity, their gender, their socioeconomic. I had a purpose for the kingdom of God. Little did I know that I would pastor the second largest church in the nation and train over 6,000 organizations how to do outreach, which is still impacting the world, not just America, the world today. Little did I know. But you know what I did, John? I took out a $10,000 loan and I bought books and I started reading theologians and studying and how to study the word of God. I was preparing. Would I be there in a year? No, it seemed crazy. That loan would be well paid off before I'd even preached my first sermon. But God knew that I'd get in his word, I'd study, I'd obey, I'd figure out a way to put food on the table, to do what I had to do, whether it was cleaning doctor's offices or scrubbing someone's toilet, because I had to get in God's word. And I was obsessed with it. Yes, I wanted to learn for myself. Yes, I wanted to heal, but it was something bigger. I felt like I was a carrier of his word. I had no idea one day I would preach to 190 nations via uh, amazing television networks. I had no idea of all that, but God. You see, God is preparing you. And so here Esther was in preparation. And she listened. She did what they said. Everyone else was adorned with trinkets. They had braided hair. The Bible says they had all this gold on. They made themselves look wonderful. But Esther was very plain. And the king noticed her. Let me tell you right now that the king has his eye on you. And the king has noticed you. And the fact that you're tuned in, I believe that you are an Esther that has been raised up for such a time as this, that God is calling you. And you say, what does this for, for such a time as this have to do with it? You see, seasons are fixed or appointed times. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one, to everything, there is a season, a fixed and appointed time and a time to every purpose under heaven, because purpose is fulfilled here in the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. We no longer have a heaven problem. We have an earth problem. And God needs someone to execute out his will, his intention. We must take our nations back. We must take our school systems back. The kingdom of God suffered violent and the violent take it by force. We must take our children back. Your children will not be lost to Satan. I'm telling you, grandma. I'm telling you, mama. I'm telling you, papa. I'm telling you, daddy. God has raised you up for such a time as this and your blood line will not go under the destruction of a Haman who wants to devour, kill, steal, and destroy your children, wants them to die of suicide, drug overdose, sexual identity, uh, confusion, everything else. The devil is a liar. They will not be a part of woke culture. They will be a part of truth and righteousness and raise up because you have been raised up for such a time as this. I know you go through times where you feel like a failure. You feel like you're struggling. You feel like there's no way. But I'm telling there's a reason I love wearing this Esther pendant because it reminds me, Paula, when the devil's coming to get you, when the media is lying about you, when this is taking place, when people are abandoning you, when you feel like you don't have the strength to do this. I remember I didn't choose this because I'm going to tell you what for such a time as this means. I didn't choose this. God chose this. God chose you for your family. God chose you for that business. God chose you for this nation. God chose you for that specific mountain, whether it was government or science or technology or business or religion, God has positioned you in the earth for such a time as this. Now the question, Esther, is you can draw back or you can draw near. Same problem in the book of Hebrews. They drew back and they provoked God just like in the day of the wilderness. Or you can draw near. We'll get to that. But how do you know it's your time for such a time because it's not talking chronos it's not talking natural man time what well, we see in first chronicles chapter 12 verse 22 it declares the the sons of issachar who understood the times 
Now, it's not just like a chronos. And knew what Israel should do. They could direct them. So seasons, set times and appointments are linked to cycles. It's important because a cycle is an interval during which a recurring sequence of events <laughs> happens. So we're in this season, watch. We're in this cycle right now. Now, it's so important because a woman knows this. If you put a seed in a cycle, she's going to get pregnant. Right. There are certain ways that you interrupt cycles. You change the cycle. You change the enemy's trajectory. You change some things. There's a lot of teaching that I teach there. But to know that you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this, right now, first off, their kingdom's clashing. The kingdoms are clashing. Kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of satanic hierarchy. They're clashing right now. It's the a world war. system, There's a war. there is a war. Spiritual it's war. exactly right. And whoever, whoever doesn't just steward this right, but who will rule and steward the earth as resources is, is the one who rises up in the midst of this kingdom war. And I'll, I'll just call it out. I'm telling you, that is not a... That's not to be a Jeff Bezos or a Soros or a, other names that we could just drop in there because, to my knowledge, they're not saved and serving God. This is to be a person who has relationship with God, who's called by God, who has the mind of Christ that God has raised up for such a time as this. So what does it mean for those who have been called and who have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? It says this, who knows if you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this, have come in the Hebrew is naga. It means to lay your hand on, to reach, to arrive, to strike. Think what I'm saying, to punish, to defeat, destroy. So it doesn't just mean you've laid your hand on it, that you've reached for it, you've moved in it, but it literally means you're about to defeat, you're about to punish, you're about to destroy. God is about to cause you to rise up in a place that's gonna bring serious destruction to satanic kingdom and rule and reign, which he's occupying illegally. Kingdom here is maku. It means to rule, to reign, to have dominion, which God gave you in Genesis 1, 28. For such a time as this means when and in due season. It's from the root in the Hebrew of eternity, everlasting, old world without end. So put it together for me, Paula. Hey, Esther, talk to me. Something's burning in your spirit because eternity is trying to invade the earth. What is fixed in heaven is trying to find a vehicle that'll say, maybe God had a plan. It's already written in heaven. Before the foundations were ever formed, the Lamb of God was slain. It was already written in heaven. Paula White Kane has to be born. Paula Michelle Fur, 1966, April 20th, Tupelo, Mississippi. She'll go through this, this, and this, and that. But I'm positioning her. If she won't be a victim, if she won't sit there and, and die out and depressed and, and worrying about man's opinion, she'll listen to Mordecai, the voice of the Holy Spirit. She will strike and punish because it's really God's power through her, the kingdom of Satan. She'll continue to preach the gospel around the world. Esther, talk to me. You were called to strike down, to punish and to defeat the satanic opposition that has had your bloodline, that has had your community, that has had this nation, what am I telling you? God has taken what he has established in eternity and bringing it to the earth through you, Esther, for such a time as this.